The Super Bowl of kegs, which we did on uh, Friday, was wrong. We said that uh, the, the Kansas City Chiefs were going to win, which means we should probably go back to the Super Bowl of eggs because we've never been wrong with the Super Bowl of eggs. Or we come up with something else, the Super Bowl of legs, or <laughs> until we figure get it right, maybe we get people named Megan that can come in and race Super Bowl of Megs. Mm-hmm. Something, you know. But uh, yeah. I was it didn't work. I was very excited to, to see Tom Brady win the Super Bowl because I'm such a fan of his work ethic and so just just such a fan of – that whole thing you know when you see his story how he wasn't anything in high school Mm -hmm. and he just kept working and working and working that was amazing to see and then to see like tampa bay win you know at home like Mm -hmm. that was crazy well everything kept saying it was like kansas city was gonna win kansas city was gonna win and i kept saying don't underestimate tom brady Mm -hmm. he's the goat like whether you like tom brady or not you can't deny the skills that he has and the connection with rob gronkowski What was exciting for me was, like, I felt really good for Tom Brady because Patrick Mahomes was in kindergarten the first time Tom Brady won his first Super Bowl. And I just kept thinking, man, that would be embarrassing if you lost to him. But it kind of felt like Kansas City, like, they came in a little too cocky. Mm -hmm. Like, they got got to their head that everyone was predicting they were going to win. Do you know the beginning of the game where they show, they use these new 3D cameras. I don't know if you were watching it. It looked like PlayStation to you. But (sighs) they, they use these new cameras. And I just thought the body language of Tom Brady walking in versus Patrick Mahomes where Patrick Mahomes looked like he was a little like a little wide eyed and Tom Brady looked like he was rolling in like a badass. Oh. So I didn't notice any about the cameras, but uh and then there's the halftime show. I've been going back and forth about the halftime halftime show so much. Mm. What do you think, Kyle? Honestly, I did not love it. Okay. I I don't want to like the weekend is an incredible performer. And as a concert, that would have been a great concert. But to know the behind the scenes that he spent seven million dollars of his own money on that, it was a little disappointing. And I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe a little, maybe a little more wow factor. Maybe the rumors of people joining him hyped it up a little much, uh-huh. which sort of affected my perception of the performance. But I mean, like his singing was great. The aesthetics were great, but it's sort of like you expect something bigger for the Super Bowl halftime show. I read positive reviews and then I read horrible reviews. What did you what did you think, Suzette? I really enjoyed it. I think I was expecting like a special guest and but he I, even said there was no special guest. No, yeah, but I, I mean I'm like, oh, he might oh, be saying that liar. to surprise us. When the door yeah. opened, when I it really opened do. up and he was gonna go in, I thought there's a special yes, guest. Yes, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. somebody was gonna walk yeah. out. But I feel like we've been spoiled with so many special guests that I sometimes I forget to just focus on his performance. And I feel like from beginning to end, he had so much energy, and he took over that entire stadium. Like, he was everywhere. From his, like, just his um, presence, like, performing, the way he was moving, the way he was singing. Like, I'm a weekend fan, so I'm singing along to all the songs. And then just, I, I can see where he spent all that money. Like, everything he did from the very top of the stadium to, like, the bottom. To all the dancers dressed like him. I don't know. I think if I take away the whole special guest, nobody showing up, just the performance itself, I, th- I thought he did amazing. So uh, so here's what I was trying to figure out. He's in Tampa, and he opens up, and I have not read anything about this. In fact, my, my big complaint, I have not read one thing about my complaint. He starts with the skyline of Las Vegas. I'm like, you're in Tampa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> why, why? Well, you spent seven minutes. Still, yeah. you're in Tampa, so why wouldn't you cater it to? It's like when you walk out, you don't go, what's up, Las Vegas? You would have said, what's up, Tampa? You start out with the Las Vegas skyline. Then he comes out and performs, and he's got everyone. All I keep reading about for the people that don't know his music, they all thought those were jock straps on their faces, mm-hmm. right? That's what you keep reading about, mm-hmm. right? Um, I thought when you really step back and think about it, because my wife was asking me, What did you think? What do you think? I'm like, Man, this guy, one man, writes this music, signs record deals, goes out to sell arenas around the country, and now by himself, he's performing at the Super Bowl. That by himself, that must be amazing. Like, that, that's like Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, that by himself, like, to critique his artwork is, like, who am I to critique his artwork? But as a fan sitting there, like, there were times where I was kind of bored. When I got, when I became like, wow, is when he took over the field. 
Mm-hmm. When he took over the field, I was like, he should have done that. Yeah, during blinding lights. And I was I, like, I, okay, that's that's wow. But and then when he got into the into the mirror, whatever, I was like, whoa, yeah, that, whoa, that's getting a little, little dizzying. Getting a little dizzy. My wife was like, I'm getting dizzy. I'm getting dizzy. I think there's I this a- thing too with the Super Bowl where the artists do like little chunks of their songs and it moves like that, but you also don't have time enough to settle in. Like he could have done the whole blinding light song. That would have been really really. But they cool, all do. So mon- could, they all do these montages I, I know of their hits. A, if you think about it, he's got whatever, 13 minutes, and he's got probably 80 million yeah. new viewers that don't know who he is. True. So I'm wondering why his people didn't say, all right, let's lose the bandages on the face. People don't know your story. Let's just get your music out there. Let's let people know, because your music is really, really good. And then I was also wondering, why is he wearing the same jacket and I the same look? I wanted a costume change. Yeah. Like, like, it's so easy to change your jacket. <laughs> like, that's the same thing he did at Saturday Night Live. It's the same thing, the same mm-hmm. outfit. Like, you know, I mean, remember when he cut all his dreads? Yeah. He had a whole new fresh look when he launched something new. So I thought he was going to have a whole new fresh look. Now, that's me being hypercritical. Now, again, going back to what I said, this guy sat down with a pen and paper and wrote some songs, and now he's performing the Super Bowl. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, High school dropout, great. He's too. He's an amazing performer, but uh, it's almost like when you're on the stage of Super Bowl halftime show, the expectation is just mm-hmm. naturally raised. And we talk about this every year with every Super Bowl performance, and there's always some disappointment just because it's so hyped up. Now, what did you think of the Super Bowl commercials? I have two that were my favorite. Two that really stand out for me, that really, really, really stand out. There was one that made me emotional, but I don't know what it was for, <laughs> which to me is no, like, it's kind of sad. It was the one where they were, they called the parents to say Toyota. that their daughter was born. That's the one. That was okay, one of my favorite ones. Yeah, and then it's she great. turned into a swimmer, but she's paraplegic, mm-hmm. which was like, I was like crying at the end of so that commercial. So was I. That was, that, that was one of my favorite ones. And it was bizarre how also it was for Toyota. I know. I was <laughs> like, wow. I, I guess that's why I didn't really that remember. That was one of my favorite ones. The other one was the Drake straight, State Farm. That was yeah. the only one. one that stood out to me. That, was that, the Drake one. I thought that was so damn mm-hmm. clever. There's so many things in that commercial that stood out to me because it was also Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> random. Right. Like, like, so and then the real Jake from State Farm, his arms are humongous. Yeah. <laughs> He's ripped. And then there's Drake from State Farm. And I'm like, how did we not come up with that already? I know. I know. You know what I mean? And, and then the, the fact that he's so cool to do that commercial. He's like, so just, cool. Yeah. He's that chill. commercial, like if I was I wonder if, if Drake says you can only run it in the Super Bowl. Because if I was State Farm, that would be the my whole campaign for yeah. the rest of the year. Yes. That was such a good commercial. And I, I, wonder, saw, I saw it twice. I wonder how much he got paid for that. Tons. Like oh, yeah. that, he must have gotten so much money. Such a Great commercial, man. I like I want State Farm now. <laughs> 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 like they do. Yeah. 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 So you're the one did not work.